Today we're going to um, continue talking about how we can enhance your earning capability or potential. Um, previously we talked about how that can be done through the benefits that your potential employer might offer you. Today we're going to take another look at some other um, criteria or characteristics to keep in mind to earn more money during your lifetime. So today we are going to discuss um, compounding interest. We're going to talk a little bit more about retirement. We'll talk about the rule of 72, and we will talk about, yes, you too can be a millionaire. It is possible. You are never too young to think about your retirement. I know you're getting out into the real world. You're thinking about all the things you want to do with your paycheck. But Keep in mind that retirement will come faster than you realize. I have been um, teaching for almost 20 years, and um, it's gone by extremely fast. And now I'm looking at the other side, thinking about um, when I can retire. Um, as stated in um, presentation number one, when you retire, there are some things to keep in mind. When you're in, we're in retiring and investing money, you have the principal amount, you have the interest rate that you're going to be using, as well as you need to have time. And for um, all of you out there, that's one um, thing that you have that I don't. You have time. And um, if you start investing early, the more money you will have in the end. And that is the key to being a millionaire. So some things to keep in mind about retirement. Um, Social Security benefits will not be enough to have a comfortable retirement. What I tell my students is don't even plan on Social Security. And then if Social Security is there, it's just another um, icing on the cake that you have. Um, with the state of Social Security today, um, we, we really don't know what's going to happen. So the best advice I have is, is don't plan for it, and if it's there, the icing on the cake. Also, the quality of life you have in retirement depends upon you. As stated earlier, how much you save and when you begin saving, and how well you invest that saving. Be knowledgeable on how to save and invest your money. Take advantage of work retirement saving plans, such as 401k plans that's offered by your employer, or if that's not offered, or in addition to, you can open an IRA, which stands for Individual Retirement Account. Again, start saving for retirement as soon as you can. Time, 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 um, because that will start working for you. Okay, first let's talk about simple interest versus compound interest. A simple interest is interest earned on the principal investment, um, and compound interest is earning interest on interest. Um, compound interest relates to changes, charges the borrower must pay, not just on the principal amount borrowed, as in simple interest, but also on any interest outstanding at the point in time. So the simplest way that I, I can explain this is if you have simple interest and you take $1,000 and you take it times one year at 10% interest, you earn $100 off that interest. The second year, you're going to invest $1,000 again. You'll take it times one year and you'll get another $100. So that means during the course of those two years, you made $200 off that interest. You're thinking, oh, that, that doesn't sound so bad. That sounds like a pretty good deal. But let's look at the compound interest. The compound interest is you earn interest on interest. So um, you take the $1,000 times a year times 10%, you get $100 in interest. So that means the second year you have $1,100 to invest in, instead of just 1000 Another thing, start retirement planning early. Uh, maximize the power of compound interest. Um, when you start working out and get your first job, 18, 21, 23, whatever the case might be, um, if you start investing, that compound interest will be in your favor. So let's look at starting early. The saving uh, method, 30-year time horizon, you invest 3000 annually for the first eight years, and you don't, you don't put any more into it. You just leave it alone, and you don't touch it. At the end of 30 years, you will notice that um, it could be worth $218,768. Um, so 
looking at that, let's look at it again. You put $3,000 away for eight years. It's a total of $24,000. And then during the course of the 30 years, you make over $218,000. Then let's say that you procrastinate and you don't put money away. And then you get to a part, a time in your life um, that you think, you know, I really need to have some money sitting there for when I retire. So you procrastinate. You do, do not invest in the first eight years that you are working. You invest 3000 annually for the next 22 years. That means for 22 years, you um, invest $3,000, and that makes a total of $66,000. Now, remember, you didn't invest the first eight years. You invested the remaining 22 years. So then if you look at it, you make $148,268 at the end of 30 years. So you're looking at that, and you're like, how can that be? I invested the first eight years, and I have a lot more money of $218,000, and then I procrastinated, and then I put in $66,000, but my end investment is only $148,000. Again, this goes back to what we talked about right at the start of this presentation. It's time. Time is really important to help with that compound interest. Okay, let's specifically look at different types of retirement accounts. So you have some retirement accounts um, sponsored by your employer, and then you might have some that are sponsored by you that you do individually. So let's look at employer-sponsored. Um, a lot of times, as we talked about in presentation number one, um, this is a benefit that employers can offer you, and it's a really nice um, benefit. So let's talk about a 401k. A 401k is offered by employers as a way for their employees to save money on a pre-tax basis that they can use towards retirement. You can use the money in the account to invest and the returns will not be taxed. Upon the age of retirement, you can withdraw the money and then pay a regular income taxes on that money. One of the benefits of this type of account is that your employer can contribute money to the account and receive a tax break for it. A lot of times, two employers will match it or they'll pay 50% of whatever you put away. I would take advantage of this. If you don't take advantage of this, it's like um, just watch, watching money go down the drain. Then you have a 403B. This is probably not as well known as a 401K, but a 403B plan is a retirement plan for certain public school employees, employees of tax-exempt organizations and, minist and ministers. Individual 403B accounts are are established and maintained by eligible employers. The main difference is the type of employers who can offer them. So like a 401k plan will be offered for profit companies, where 403b plans are only available to employees of tax-exempt organizations. Okay, so let's go to personal retirement. Maybe your employer doesn't offer a 401, okay, 401k, and then you're like, I need to put money aside for when I retire. Or um, a lot of individuals will also do um, a traditional IRA in addition to their 401k. So let's talk about personal, personal retirement. A traditional IRA is called an individual retirement account. <clears throat> and basically, you put money into the retirement account just like you do a 401k. Your employer doesn't match it because this is a personal retirement account. You put money away, and then the day you retire, you can take the money out and it gets taxed. <clears throat> then let's take a Roth IRA. A Roth IRA is a little bit different than a traditional IRA. It is um, relatively new into the scene of retirement accounts. And basically with the Roth IRA is they tax you before you put money into the account. And then it has a chance to grow and grow and grow. And then when it's time for you to retire, they do not tax you again. So they tax you up front instead of taxing you at the end. So what would you say if I could guarantee you 100% return on your money? Many corporate retirement plans will match your savings. So as we just talked about with the 401k, um, if you look at that corporate match plan, a lot of employers will match it. They'll match um, 100%. They might match 
of what you're putting in. So this, this um, table right here does a nice job of explaining how that money can grow for you if your employer does match, uh, match those funds. So let's look at one-to-one, -one, meaning your employer matches 100% of what you put in. So you put in $1,200, that means your employer will put in $1,200. So that means that you have $2,400 that you have put in. Okay, so we talked a little bit about traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs. The benefits of tax-free growth, your employer's plan or an IRA as well. So if you look here, if it's tax deferred versus um, if it's tax, um, taxable upfront. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the rule of 72. This is something nice to just keep in mind to put to kind of organize in the back of your mind and when you're thinking about investing or savings or even retirement. It's something that you can do relatively quick. So what you do is you divide 72 by the rate of return on your savings to see how long it will take to double your money. So let's say, for example, you take 72 divided by 2% because that's the rate of return. When you divide that, if you round it, you, it'll take you 36 years to double that money. And you're like thinking, oh, I would like to earn 8%. And you're like, okay, so if I put this money away at $5,000 and it earns 8% continuously, if I divide 8%, um, if I take 72 divided by 8, that means within nine years that money will double. So rule 72 works for inflation as well, something to keep in mind. But I like um, doing the rule of 72. It's something relatively quick and easy that you can remember and you can do. It gives a ballpark figure. It isn't 100% accurate, but it isn't off by too much. So every little bit counts. Savings just a few dollars a day can add up over time. So remember we talked to you about, yes, that you can be a millionaire and as most of you have, you have time. But something else to keep in mind is if you just save a little bit each day over the course of the years, it adds up to be quite a bit of money. So let's take a dollar a day, which is usually about a can of pop. And um, if you look at age 45, if you save a dollar a day, that means you save $365 a year. It would be $18,000, over $18,000. Um, as you get to be an adult, um, $5 or $10 might be more feasible. So if I take $10 um, per day, it's $3,650 a year. If I look at the age of 45, if I would have saved that, I would have um, had over $180,000. The best retirement advice ever given is when you get a raise, put half of it into your retirement savings. Because remember, it's a raise. You weren't expecting that money anyway. When you start to do that, that money will grow for you. Increase the payroll deductions for your retirement plan as soon as you get the raise. Um, save the money before you get used to having it, as we talked about. Remember, it was a raise. You didn't have the money to begin with. And then the last thought. Consider at target maturity mutual fund if it is offered uh, you can have target dates of 2050, 2055, or 2060. So I hope today that you learned a little bit more about retirement, why it's important to um, start putting money away as soon as you can. Remember, time is on your side. Um, we also talked a little bit about compound interest and why um, investing with compound interest is so important. Um, we talked a little bit about the advantages of a 401k match and why you should take advantage of that if your employer offers it to you. The power of tax-free investing. We talked a little bit um, of a rule, the rule of 72. And remember, as we summarize everything up, yes, you too can be a millionaire.